So the million dollar question here, are we about to uh, break on through to a commodity super cycle? The last one we had one was in 2002, and we saw things such as copper priced below 2000 a ton at the time for most of the 90s, uh, break through 10,000. We saw oil uh, jump from uh, 20 a barrel to 140 a barrel. So the question is, could that happen again now? I think the short answer is it could, and we may very well be in the beginning or the early stages of a new super cycle. If you think about you know, just how much commodities have delivered just in the last few months you know, from the trough that we saw kind of in the middle of last year, we've already rebounded quite significantly from those bottom levels, obviously, most famously when the oil price briefly went negative there. Um, but I think there are some very strong reasons as to why we could be in the early stages. I mean, there's the, the fiscal and monetary policy backdrop, which I think everybody's familiar with, um, which is creating a inflationary environment. And obviously, you know, one of the key reasons to be invested in commodities is because of their you know, benefits in the portfolio as a hedge against inflation. But I think also what we're dealing with is we're dealing with you know, many years of capex uh, constrained supply and that you know was only made worse by the pandemic last year right and so you know couple that with uh, a now a global recovery uh, or at least a, an economy you know trying to recover and recovering quickly with all these stimulus measures on top I think we could see higher commodity prices going forward from here. And that's a really good point with this pent up demand, which commodities uh, are, are most likely to, to bode best here? Because not all will uh, reap the benefits, correct? That's right. I mean, I think like everything, um, there's probably a short term answer and a longer term answer. I think in the short term, uh, it's, it's a very strong outlook in my view for almost all commodities. And I say almost all, because I'm sure there's one that I've thought of that or haven't thought of, which may be negatively impacted. But I think if you look across the core uh, commodities, you know, iron ore, um, copper, the base metals more broadly, the precious metals sector, um, agricultural commodities, and obviously oil and gas, the energy complex more broadly, I think that um, the huge amounts of stimulus uh, that's being put into the economy right now uh, will benefit all of these commodities in the short run. What about platinum and palladium? Will uh, any sentiment here? I mean, there's a big push for them, including silver, uh, when we're talking green energy and a move towards a cleaner technology. Yeah, that, that's right. So in the longer run, I think what we're talking about here is an energy transition. And we're transitioning away from an economy that's built upon reliance on hydrocarbons to an economy that is really uh, you know, an electrification of the world, if you will. So a transition to a green energy environment. And so in that, you know, benefic benefits, um, you know, in terms of metals, iron ore, copper, um, other base metals, we talked about uh, platinum, uh, which is a key uh, metal needed for the production of green hydrogen, um, but also for hydrogen fuel cells as well, and also palladium. So I think metals do well in that environment. But obviously, if we're looking you know, forward to a green energy future, that doesn't bode well for oil and traditional uh, energy infrastructure. And you think that over a longer run, you know, the, the oil price would decline. Well, some thoughts on gold, which has been in bear market territory since uh, it saw its highs in August. Yeah, it, the gold market, uh, it's been a tough place you know, for the last few months because there's a sort of double whammy here of not just the rising rates, which obviously everybody talks about, but obviously... What goes hand in hand with rising rates is a stronger U.S. dollar. And so typically that's the, the relationship um, that has had that negative correlation and a stronger dollar, you know, rising rates has pushed the price of gold down. I think, though, that um, you know, people have to bear in mind that with all the stimulus, et cetera, in the market, I think rates really can only rise to a certain level. Um, and what I mean by that is that I think right now, we could start or be starting to see um, a sort of leveling out, natural leveling out of interest rates you know, here in the United States. But if rates continue to go up, I would think that um, the Federal Reserve, other central banks around the world um, would have to step in and instigate some kind of yield curve control because they don't want rates to go materially higher than they are uh, now. And indeed, I don't think that the economy could handle rates um, significantly higher than where we are right now. So 
I think in my mind, you know, gold is, is well positioned at the moment. Um, I'm still obviously bullish on gold longer term. And I think that it's always uh, a part of the portfolio. It, you know, this is a repeat scenario that we've seen in the past, Will, right? Keep rates down, money printing continues, uh, stimulus package about, perfect conditions for gold, yet it doesn't take off. What's the spark that's really needed here? I think at this level, you know, you have to have um, inflation expectations or a need an inflation surprise, you know, an actual surprise in the numbers that come out okay. at this level, because I think the stimulus is well known. We all understand the effect of that in the economy. But at the moment, that's sort of manifesting itself um, into a stronger dollar and higher rates, which is the main thing driving markets at the moment. But I think if we get a surprise, and particularly a surprise uh, to the upside on the inflation side, I think that will really um, kick gold into gear. Okay. Um, but I think people have to be a bit more convinced that we're going to really start to see inflation here. I mean, I, I would think that it's it's not a surprise that inflation is here or coming and, you know, the Fed's using terms like transitory tra uh, inflation. Um, but you're saying by surprise, you're saying like a big numbers? I just mean by surprise, a higher, uh, obviously it would be reflected not just in the CPI, but in other you know, inflation measures that people track in the economy, but a higher number than expected, something that people would stop and say, okay, well, that's okay. You know, now something serious. Now I start pay attention. And obviously higher numbers um, would, I think, be good for gold. Fair enough. Let's wrap with silver. Uh, as I said at the start, you are the CEO and founder of Granite Shares ETFs, and there's been a lot of buzz around silver ETFs, as you know. Um, what do you make of what's unfolded in, in, in the silver market and with this whole play of, you know, squeeze silver? And I just want to get your take on whether it can even be squeezed. Can this happen in the silver market? It, it's a great question. It's one that I've been asked a lot and uh, is something that is on the top of people's minds. I think, you know, I'd start by saying that when it comes to any ETF that's backed by, you know, physical metal, then, you know, to the extent that the underlying uh, supply is based on the availability of that metal, um, then clearly if you're in a squeeze or a situation where you run out of metal, um, then you wouldn't be able to supply that particular ETF. Now, in the silver market, um, I do think that the market is too big for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And so the squeeze situation, um, particularly you know, when it sort of manifests itself you know, a month and a half or two months ago on Reddit forums, um, never really never really managed to, to gain the, certainly nothing like the, the sort of impact that it had with GameStop and, and AMC and other things. And it's largely because the market's just too big. I think the other thing that people don't necessarily think about, um, which is that you know, ever since the Hunt Brothers cornered the market, you know, the regulators have stepped in and put in regulations around uh, the amount of say the margin limits, whether it's the exchanges, um, but position limits on the exchange as well in terms of the amount of silver, the amount of a commodity um, anybody can own. And that has, I think, put the brakes on uh, a number of kind of attempts to hold you know, outsized positions. And that is a big gating factor. So when we saw that um, Reddit situation happen with silver, the exchange did step in and raise margin uh, on silver, which you know, all things being equal, you know, would stop a lot of the, the, the more speculative activity. So I think it's something to, to watch out for. I don't think um, we'll see something like that happening in silver. I do think the market is too big, um, but uh, you never know. <laughs> yeah, you never know. And, you know, just, just one last thought, could we see an explosive price movement in silver happening? Well, that, that is a different story. And, and, you know, obviously some people will say that um, there have, they have to be intrinsically linked. I don't think so. I mean, the last move that we saw, you know, in silver when silver went up to fifty dollars, um, you could argue that it was nothing to do with a short squeeze um, in the same context as as what we saw recently on Reddit. So I think the price of silver can move higher, uh, and I don't think we have to be in that sort of situation for it to do so. Um, but I think that in a rising price environment, and again, transition to a green energy infrastructure. You know, silver is a metal that is going to be more in demand. It is in demand at the moment, but it's going to be more in demand in the future, along with copper, along with these other uh, metals that are going to be so important or are so important uh, in all these new technologies that we want and need for a green energy transition. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.